Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to paint this pretty house with a white picket fence in the fall. I'm working on an 8x10 primed and double stretched canvas. I purchased it triple primed already from the store and I haven't prepped it with anything else. Uh, what I will be doing is just wetting the canvas down with this brush and a little bit of water prior to painting. But I'm going to go over the colors quickly right now and check out the full list below this video in the description box as well. Okay, we've got light blue violet dioxazine purple, crimson red, neon red, titanium white, neon orange, a little bit of turquoise, uh, green and blue, hunter green, light olive green, and neon yellow. And I've got a number 10 flat brush. I'm gonna start just adding some water to the canvas with. And now if you have a spray bottle, you can go ahead and use that as well. I would recommend putting it on the fine misting uh, setting that way you won't get too much water and you control the amount that you're adding so what we're going to do first is just start with a background and I'm going to begin with a little bit of the neon orange and white so I'm just going to start adding it right about here Now, without washing my brush off, I'm gonna take my light blue violet with some white, and I'll start at the very top, and then just gradually start working it down, kind of crisscrossing or little scoops. Have it join and meet and blend a little bit into that uh, orange. Okay, I'm gonna wash my brush off now. And the next step down here in the foreground, we're going to have the white picket fence and some flowers outside of it. So I want to have a dark base. It's going to be a really dark uh, green base. I'm going to mix some hunter green with some crimson red. I'm then going to add a little bit of dioxazine purple, a little bit more, more green. You can use black if you want. I just prefer using um, other colors to make my dark ones it adds a little bit of, uh, more richness to the painting I find so right from down here we're just going to start back and forth and it kind of looks brown if I add a little bit more green we can change that and it will dry a little bit darker too And we're going to bring it all the way up to that peach. And then we'll just take a little bit of both the greens, olive and hunter green, and then halfway where we left off with a darker and halfway on the peach, we'll just pull like that. Okay, now I'm going to wash my brush off. Okay, the next brush I'm going to be using is a little mop brush. If you don't have one, you can use a fan brush or a filbert brush and just use it in a stipple technique. Uh, I'm not getting it wet first. I'm just gonna go straight into my purple and my green and just a little bit of paint on here. I'm gonna start coming in and adding some little trees in the background. We can even pull in a little bit of that olive green in there too. I'm tapping, leaving some spaces, slightly go over this lighter green area. 
So this light green area is gonna give us some light coming, sunlight coming through the trees. Add a little bit of green here. Now it's a beautiful fall afternoon and we wanna have some beautiful red maples, but we need to have a base first to make it really pop out. So we need a nice base for like our shadow to create that contrast. Take a little bit more purple and green and just start tapping in so it doesn't look like water, right? When you brush back and forth like that, it can look like a road or a path or water. And I wanna create a bush effect here. So we can create that instantly just by the way we use our brush and just tap that stipple. Just gonna add a little bit up here. This will be behind the house. Now we're gonna have a lot of sunlight in this area so we're not really going to see, there's going to be kind of like a blind spot from all that sun, but we still need a little bit of greenery and some trees and branches around here. And I'll take a little bit of, a little bit more without washing my brush, pull in and tap in a little bit of that light olive green. And go ahead and start adding some in here. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush off now. And I'm going to quickly switch over to a liner brush. I've got a um, size zero liner brush here. Anything a little smaller will be just fine. And if you have something that's only a little bigger, then just use less pressure and just concentrate on using just the tip. So I'm going to take a little bit of green with this red and purple, a little bit of water on my brush. It really, really helps the paint flow out of these tiny little liner brushes. And we're going to just add a little tree right in here. It's in the distance, so we don't want anything too, too dark. And we'll just kind of start wiggling around to add some branches. So I have to go back and dip in to a little bit more water. And I'll add a few little branches here. just to give us that idea and feeling of trees all around, giving us more of a cozy atmosphere and having that house really settled in there. Okay, before I dry this off, I wanna come in with my same mop brush, take my greens and tap over top not solid it will dry darker but we're gonna be left with a little bit of the warm purplish reddish underpainting the first layer that we did we'll have that mixture right warm and cool shadows here deep deep forest green a little bit more of that olive green that you see as this brush gets saturated and because I rinsed it out this is what happens to the shape but at this point I can I just need to add a little bit more here and I can kind of create some neat little branches with it like this and kind of use it more like a filbert brush The red and green is so complimentary that we know this is gonna, it's gotta look good together. I'm 
I'm gonna add just a little bit more to this tree trunk here, a little purple, green. Very little pressure, wiggle, wiggle. Remember, wherever you wanna have smaller, more delicate branches, first of all, it really helps to just kind of place your pinky somewhere where it's dry and safe to do so. You have way more control with the pressure you're wanting to apply. Otherwise your brush can kind of, it's a little bit trickier. You can do it, it's a, you know, more experienced painters will have an easier time. Add another little branch right in here. Okay, so I think we're ready to start coming in with our house now. And for our house, I'm going to be using a flat brush again, but just a smaller one this time. So I've got this one here. This is a number 10. And I'm going to be using purple to start. Maybe a little bit of that green in there too. Create like a dark, dark base first and then slowly work it up to the brightest highlights. Okay, so we're gonna have a roof line that comes down here. So we're just somewhere, we know this is gonna be covered up by mostly by the sunlight and camouflaged. So don't worry about um, the way that looks too, too much. So we've got one side of the house here, the front of the house and the porch. And then another line here. Now we can create a little bit more of a dramatic look if we make it come down just a little bit lower down here. And we'll go ahead and just fill that in. Take a little bit of water on my brush. And then we've got the side of the house. A little line, slightly on an angle like this, okay? A little bit on an angle. Same with some windows. You can just use the end of your brush here, kind of just place it there, create some little rectangles. Or another one here. And we'll pull a line under that for our next roof line. Another one under that. And a few more rectangles right down here. It's going to make these darker inside. You see, with just a few, a few shapes, we've already done quite a bit. And we can add some windows on this side of the house. Make these a little bit longer. And we might have a few more windows up there. And then of course we're gonna have some pillars. I'm gonna add another little window. Maybe these are French doors on the side with big windows and then we have French doors opening up here. We'll have a little pillar right here, a white pillar. And 
and then a little shadow in here. Angle line here, shadow here. So just kind of watered down, very thin paint for this shadow. And then just a little angle like this, and then a line across to join with that roof line. We'll add some more windows on this side and just a little bit darker for our roof line. And we'll add a few more windows in there. Now you can make your, your house have any kind of windows, different shapes, maybe less or more than what I've got here. So don't think that you have to paint exactly the same as me. This is just, you know, an example for you, an idea to go by, um, but you most definitely can follow along as well. I think I want to add a little bit more of a slope to create some more perspective right here. And then a few more windows, which are so easy to do when you have a little flat brush. You just turn the brush sideways like this, line it up, pull, and then let off, and just kind of straighten out those edges after. But it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical everywhere. It's not what we're going for, so don't worry. Don't stress yourself out. And we'll add a line here. And then another pillar right about here. With a clean brush, I'm just going to gently pull off a little bit of that paint. And I'm going to add a just a few more windows here. I think we need a few more on this side. It's just looking a little bit bare, isn't it? Now it's nice that we have all that light that's going to be coming down here. So, you know, we don't have to worry <laughs> too much about adding a lot of detail. Just gonna just clean up the bottom of this a little bit. It's nice when you can just catch that paint while it hasn't totally dried yet and take off any that you might need to. Um, if it's already dry and you're unable to do this, Maybe you got it right the first time and you don't need to. Um, this is just how I've always approached my paintings. You can definitely draw yours out first. Uh, every artist has their own way of creating. I like to freehand. But if you can't um, remove the paint after, say it's already dry, then you can definitely just go back over top with a lighter color and just cover it up. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of white, clean brush, and I'm gonna go over these pillars, add a little bit of white. Add some white to the windows. You can, I'm using the little peach tinted white. Put a little line through. This just adds a, a little bit more character. I like those windows with the, the grid. Might add some shutters too. I think I will.
And we're just going to have some bushes there. I'm just going to lightly go over this shadow just a little bit here. Tap, 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 tap. Really, really easy. I always say, you know, just let the brush do the work for you. So you just don't even have to create a brush stroke. You just use the end of it and apply a light little tap. A little bit more white there. And look how much. See, I've got like no water on my brush, just paint. Okay, just a little, you can just cut in there, just slide in to load your brush. little bit of light coming in right there. Tidy that up. I'm just gonna graze over here. Graze over top with a leftover paint on my brush and we'll start the beginning stages of our light. kind of nice to actually add a little front porch here so maybe I'm just gonna make sure I wiggle wiggle to get that nice shape back just add a railing here and then And across like that. And then a few little lines for our stairs. And then we'll have the bushes. See, I used this for a stair. And so we can just add some bushes around there to tie that all in together. But I'm gonna take a little bit more of my purple and just carefully and another little definition here for the roof line and these little pillars some shadow. Add a little, a little bit more purple, just straight purple or any dark color you want inside the windows. And then before I do any more of the sunlight, I'm going to just use the corner of my brush and add some branches coming over top now. Tap, tap, tap. So see how you can, you can paint so much just with a little flat brush. So we're going to add that sunlight over top. We've got a little bit of that foggy filter Misty Sunray filter. And right here, I need to balance that out. And then I'll go back for my white wiggle wiggle to get my the shape back there. And on an angle, that little line.
I think that would also look really nice is to um, add some little hanging baskets or ferns. But just before I do that, I'm going to go back into my purple. Just bring a little tiny slope from this little roof line here. There. And then with this being on a slant, this could be a little bit more on a slant, but then it comes up right there and goes down. Okay, so we can add some shutters. I'm thinking mm, purple and blue turquoise would look pretty. So I'm just going to gently Gently dab on and add little skinny rectangles. Just a bit more of that blue in there. In there. A little bit there. Add a little bit of my green turquoise or some accent sort of highlights here. Very gentle taps. Okay, and then we'll go back to those other original colors. And add a few more. I'll just add some pretty trim here around these. And that's all I paint out. Get all the strips off. I'll take a little bit of this off because I want to leave a space in between the window and that roof line. And just come in and just add just a little bit more here to clean up. I mean, you could add little window boxes too if you wanted. to a little mop brush. I'm 
I've got this one here. It's uh, the same size as the other one, but it's more of a, an angled oval. And I'm only using this because it happens to be dry. The other one has lost its shape now from using it. And I'm going to take some purple, some green, and we're just going to kind of add some little bushes here. And tuck this little house in here and make it look a little bit more settled in with some landscaping. I'll take a little bit of that green without washing my brush off. With a little liner brush, I've got a, or a round, actually, this one's actually a round brush. This is a number three. I'm going to take a little bit of purple and green. And we'll have some little hanging ferns here, I think. So we'll just do like a little oval shape like this, or a little round shape first, just to start. And we can have one right here, another one right here on either side of the front, maybe maybe just one more right here. And then we'll take both olive green and that hunter green. And we're not going to be able to see all of the little palm leaves but we know they kind of kind of fan out and look like little little uh palm trees so just little wisps you can even kind of tap if you want to create a little bit more texture whoops i'll have to correct that i, I set my finger down where it wasn't dry and I picked up a little bit of that blue, but we learned from our mistakes. And so I can show you guys how you can fix that. Okay, so maybe I'll try this first. Yeah, see, you can just take it off if you catch it right away. Just a little bit of uh, purple right here. Just to pull into that roof line. And then right here, a little bit more of that. I'll take a little bit of neon yellow, cool. And add some right there. A little bit of purple and go pull these stairs a little bit more that way dab 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 into that green And a little bit of neon yellow and with the other yellow or other green it's nice to have a few different shades just kind of a little bit of white here and a little bit of turquoise the green. Okay. 
Okay, with my flat brush, back over to my flat brush, I'm gonna take a little bit of green with my purple. Follow that roof line. into my orange, my white. I'll make up a little bit more of that peach color. Okay, so now what we can do is add a little bit of, hmm, let's take a little bit of crimson red. And we'll add some, maybe some fall blooming roses, the last roses of the season. And just a few up here, or back there, I should say. And a little bit of neon red. And then I'm going to come in and add um, the branches, the maple leaves with my fan brush here. This is a size zero. And I'm going to begin with the crimson red first to start. We've got our dark base. Okay, so I'm just going to, we're not out to make every little individual leaf. And then neon red, kind of just wiggle, wiggle, take a little bit of that neon yellow cool. See this tree that's a little bit farther away? Add a lighter color to it. hints of that um, light olive green. And you can also just use the corner of your brush too. Kind of change the direction and twist your brush over. It's a little bit darker on this side, it's more in shadow. So I'll just add less of the neon red. So while that's all drying, one more thing before, just before I start working on the little fence, I'm going to take a little bit of this yellow, tiny bit of that neon red in there, and add a little bit more of the peach color in back here. There's some soft light. Okay, now we can start working on the fence, and I'm going to use my smallest uh, filler brush. This is a number two. And I'm going to take light blue violet to start. And we're going to go 
like kind of a, sort of a scoop scalloped picket fence. And I'm going to start right here on the side. And go up. Down, back up. I'll put a little flat top on the little caps on the top of the posts in between the boards. And just make them little T's. And the base here we're going to be covering up. So that's why I'm not um, adding any more. You don't need to. And then I'm traveling over here. So we feel like we're going around a corner. have just a little bit of blue violet to soften this shadow just here for the roof line and add just a little bit here and maybe On the front steps. A little bit of shadows there. Okay, so now I'm going to go over top with some white. That blue is still going to be dominant. I'm not going to completely cover all the blue up. I'm just adding a little bit of white so we get some different shades happening. Now I'm going for more of the rounded top look to my little fence boards. Um, but you can make yours flat or more of that ornate looking top that kind of goes like a soft sort of spade. Okay, the next thing we have to do is add the board that joins them across. So we're going to go through the middle with the blue. We'll start with the blue and then we'll use the white. So it's turning this way. Okay, 
okay, washing my brush off. Now I'm coming in with white. A little bit more here. I think that looks uh, pretty good. Now I'm going to start adding um, some green in the front here. So I'll be taking my hunter green, just a little bit of purple, a little bit of olive green. Whoops, no red. And I'm just going to start tapping in, kind of going up and down, up, down to give it more of a natural look there. And hmm, what could we have in the front here? Maybe, maybe some more light blooming roses. Could start with, I'm gonna just use this oval mop brush that's a little bit it's lost its shape a little bit. It's a bit narrow here. I also want to add, before I add the roses, I want to add some little cool shadows on the leaves here. Isn't that pretty? Just throwing in a little bit of uh, turquoise, blue turquoise here, then it helps kind of tie in with the accent shutters we have. A little bit here and there. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my purple and my red. And I'll add little dabs, making them random and not perfectly placed. So a few that are just kind of bunched and closer together. Maybe one right here. A few off the side. And then I'm just going to take a little bit more of the green, the turquoise. And add some more leaves, a little bit more olive green. Make this pop out a little bit more here. Just building those layers up, and some soft highlights. We don't have to do all the leaves. It's kind of nice to have some things in your painting a little bit blurry and more kind of impressionistic, and then it kind of helps draw in the main focus. I'm gonna use my round brush, my number three here. And I'll take some red, quite a bit of red here, and just start creating little half circles, little swirly things. I've had my roses bloom in late October even. Depends on when it freezes, right? We don't get a lot of freezing here um, on the island where we live. Thankfully, our garden goes for a long time. We have a really long season. So I'm just doing these little crescent moon or half circle shapes, nothing fancy, just little dabs, squiggles, and blobs. Okay, 
and you can take a little bit of a little bit of the neon red here and there and add just a little bit help tie everything together maybe there's a little bit a little bit of light that a few of these roses are catching maybe another little bit right here I'm going to add a little bit of purple and green. In between some of these fence uh, posts and boards. Just to make them stand out a little bit more. Okay, so we're getting close to the end here, guys. The leftover neon yellow and neon red. I'm gonna tap in. It's very, very thick. It's been drying sitting here in my studio, but I kind of like it when it gets really thick like that. And some neon orange, if I can get a little bit more out there. Gonna add a little bit of that too. Swirl those, those, those reds together. Don't forget about little buds, just little dots and dots for the buds. And I think I'll take a little bit of turquoise, purple, and add a little something in here. Then a little bit of green. Actually, it just seems like something's missing under there. So I'd like to add some window boxes. So just with the same liner brush, purple, red, any dark color. Need a little bit of water in my brush. See that? That's when you know you need to get just the tiniest bit. So a little rectangle partially over the windows. And then a little shadow, clean brush, a little bit of light blue violet on the edge there, just right underneath. And then we'll take both of our greens and we'll just tap, tap, tap in. Some little dabs here. Give 
can have them spilling down little vines coming off the edge like this and then got a lot of this red let's take a bit of red a little bit of white and dab on some tiny little bright blooming geraniums or maybe a few little roses as well Got a little bit of light catching these ones over here. A few little vines coming down on this one too. And one last dark shadow. Red, purple, and green. I'm gonna completely dry this off now, and we'll come in with our final uh, brush strokes and stuff. The sunlight coming in from here. So I'm gonna take my hair dryer and dry it off. Okay, so the brush I'm gonna be using is my number ten flat brush. We're gonna be using some water. We're gonna really thin out our paint, but not so much that it, it's gonna be dripping, right? So we're gonna be working in a diagonal um, brush stroke and direction. We're gonna start from up here and just pull and then flick, pull and flick. I'm gonna get my brush wet. I'm gonna be using some white, neon yellow, and a bit of that neon orange. So we get a really gorgeous golden glow for this fall day that we're painting. So we'll see, this might be a little bit too watery. I'm just gonna dab off the excess on a towel. There, that's just about perfect. So from the top here, oh, I think I had it right the first time with the water. A little bit more, reload. And bring that sunlight right over. A little bit more white, a little bit thicker this time. Make that a little bit blurry as well. Now I'm going to take a little bit of that olive green, white, and sun ray color. And I'm just gonna come from down here and then gently sweep across. A little bit more of the light olive green. And a little bit of light right there. bright green source of light here. Just little dabs for the sun. Okay, 
I'm going to finish with the final highlights on these caps. White on the very top and then blue right underneath. A shadow. I'm just going to take my pinky because it's got more of a round shape and just dab on. That bright sunlight right there and then just a little bit of blue and white fumbled a bit right there let's clean that off okay well I'm really happy with how this turned out I hope you guys like it and want to paint along let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you all soon in the, in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Take care guys. Bye.